Alrighty, XFL. I haven't talked about it in a while on this channel, but I'm um, gonna do it today because of the rules. They finally finalized those, they finally got those out there for us. Um, and now it's just a question of am I going to watch it? Am I going to cover the XFL? Um, we'll, we'll find out in a minute, but. First, let's go over these rules. Um, so, um, it's about 15 different things here that differentiate from, you know, the NFL and other failed leagues like the AAF or the UFL, the USFL, or something like that. Um, so, let's talk about the five gameplay innovations first that they have on their site, which is first up is the kickoff where the kicker will kick from the 25-yard line. He must kick, and it says that he must, he must kick the ball in the air and in play in between the opponent's 20-yard line and the end zone. The coverage team lines up on the return side from the 35-yard line, and the return team lines up on the 30-yard line. Each team must have exactly three players outside the hash marks on both sides of the ball. It can't move until the ball is caught by the kicker. Or right about a return. Out of bounds kicks and kicks that fall short of the 20 will result in an illegal procedure penalty taking the ball all the way out to the kicking team's 45 yard line. Okay, okay. Uh, players can move when the ball is touched by the returner over three seconds after the ball touches the ground. When the official waves his head down, if the ball is kicked into the end zone and is down, it is a major touchback, and the ball is placed at the return side, 35-yard line. If the ball bounces inbounds and then out of the end zone or is down in the end zone, the ball is placed at the return side, 15-yard line. If a player on the return team touches the ball and goes out of bounds, the ball is spotted where it went out of bounds. If the team wishes to run an onside kick, it must indicate this to the official before the play. And you, the two teams will be permitted to line up using the traditional NFL rules. There will be no surprise onside kicks. Um, now, what do I think about this rule? Um, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Um, it, 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 it's a bit confusing. Um, it has, it's probably going to have its ups and it's probably going to have its downs. I'd rather it be like the AF style of kickoff where there was no kickoff you just put the ball 25 yard line go um so that's kind of dumb to me <clears throat> so the next one is the punt the point after touchdown um which was the same back in the old xfl and the stars football league which was like a minor league that ran from like 2011 to 2013 um so uh, so the XFL's touchdown rules are, you know, you get the option of running a play from the 2-yard line for a point, from the 5-yard line for 2 points, or from the 10 for 3 points. So there's no kickers here for this. Um, at all. So that's kind of, again, that's kind of, you know, eh. Um, if the defense is able to cause a turnover and return the ball to the opponent's end zone, that they can get, you know, the one point, the two point, or the three points that the offense is trying to score. Now, this rule right here, I think it's all right. Um, I'd rather it just be just a two point conversion automatically. Again, the AAF wins on that one, so I, I, I don't really like it at all. Um. And it's not near automatic in the NFL with the with the extra point kick. That's don't 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 say that. Don't 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 say that. Uh, so punting, the punting team cannot release the ball or rather release past the line of scrimmage until the ball is kicked. Gunners must line up at the line of scrimmage and are permitted to move laterally once the ball is snapped until it's kicked. Defenders over the gunner cannot cross the line of scrimmage to the ball is kicked. If the ball goes out of bounds inside the 35-yard line, it is a major touchback. 
The ball goes to the 35 yard line. The ball lands the opponent's end zone or goes out the end zone. The result is a major touchback and the ball goes out to the 35 yard line. Fair catches are forbidden. Though they're not really supposed to be a thing. Um, eh. Again, this is kind of an eh move. Um, um, not, not really sure, you know, about this rule. Not really sure about this rule either. I mean, you have to, you have to have the advantage of, you know. Because it says the XFL touchback here will create less incentive for teams to punt. In an opponent's territory in the NFL and college, touchbacks go to the 20, so teams will risk less versus the XFL on punts. Our coaches are incent- will be incentivized to go for it on four because there's a higher likelihood of a positive punt return. No ability to pin the receiving team with a coffin corner kick. This one is, a- is an absolutely no. No, sir. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. You should be able to pin your pin the opponent deep. This is a rule that I don't think should have been changed all that much for the NFL or other leagues that are around. Dumb rule. Double forward pass. So if a team completes a forward pass behind the line of scrimmage, that team may throw a second forward pass as long as the ball has no time crossed the line of scrimmage. Once the ball is past the line of scrimmage, forward passes are permitted. This rule, it's a good one. It's a good rule. I like it. Good rule. Um, overtime. Oh, God, here we go with this. Um, overtime shall consist of five rounds, staging in an alternate single possession play as it is customary in the NHL, which honestly only about maybe like a few people care about in America. It's mostly Canadians. And the MLS, which is absolutely trash, um, penalty kicks. A round will consist of one offensive play per team. Each possession starts at the opponent's five, and the offensive team has one play to score. Team with the more points at the five rounds is the winner. If a team has been mathematically eliminated before all five rounds have been completed, then the game ends immediately. Um, if Team A scores on his first three attempts, Team B Stopped on his first three attempts. Did those subsequent plays are necessary? <laughs> if teams are tied after five rounds, then the rounds continue until one team is leading at the conclusion of a round. And that team will be the winner for scoring purposes. Each successful overtime score is worth two points. The defensive team can't score. If the offensive team commits a turnover, the play is over immediately. Defense, if the defensive team commits a penalty, the offensive team will be allowed to reattempt for the one yard line. Any subsequent penalty committed by the defensive team on any subsequent play, including future rounds, will result in a score on, awarded to the offensive team. If the offensive team commits a pre snap penalty, the ball will be moved back from the original spot pursuant to regular rules, and the play will be resumed. If the offensive team commits a post snap penalty. Um, the play will end and no score will be awarded. There will be a minimum of 20 seconds between plays with the ball spotting official working in conjunction with the TV and official review to signal when the next play begins. Um, better than the NFL, not better than college, honestly. Um, I, 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 don't, I don't really... As you can see, I'm not an NHL, NHL fan or a... MLS fan, so I don't like this rule completely. Um, it has potential, but I don't think I'll, I, don't, I don't like it. Um, timing changes. 25 second play clock. Just the 25 second play clock, and it will be a, that that it begins after the ball is snapped for the next play. Um, currently, you know the NFL has a 40 second play clock, which is totally fine. You know you got to. Um, it is what it is. Um, the comeback period, which is, um, it occurs after the two-minute warning in the in each half. So on plays that end the field of play, the clock will be stopped until the ball has been spotted in five seconds and run off the play clock. 
on incomplete passes and out of bounds plays, the game clock will stop completely until the ball is snapped. Um, hmm. I'm gonna say that the NFL has this rule on that one um, as far as like you know the cutback period at the end of the game where it's like there's two minutes left and you didn't stop them you didn't stop the team on defense I'm gonna say the NFL wins that one no no bueno no bueno XFL no bueno um, the running game clock Outside the last two minutes of each half, the game clock will run after incompletions and out of bounds plays. This is a win. This is absolutely a W by the XFL. This is a W. Um, aside from incompletions and out of bounds plays, game clock rules outside the last two minutes of each half. So yada yada, we've already covered that. Um, and it's just do you know, get the games up to three hours. Um, <sighs> Which, I mean, it's totally fine. Um, but, you know, um, at the same time, at the same time, though, you know, some NFL games do end under three hours anyway. Like, so, I, I, I get it, but at the same time. Cool, cool. This is a good rule. Good rule. Um, timeouts. Each team will have two one-minute timeouts per half. Um... So, yeah, this is a rule that I actually like. Good rule. Good rule on the timeouts. Replay. Oh, boy. The XFL will have no coaches' challenges. All plays will be subject to review from the replay official who will be stationed in a booth above the field. Um, reviewable plays are limited to a lot of things, like plays involving possession, plays involving touching the ball, the ground, plays governed by the goal line, plays governed by boundary lines, plays governed by the line of scrimmage, uh, plays governed by the line to gain, number of players on the field at the snap, game administration, uh, or penalty enforcement, what the down is, spot of the foul, status of the game clock, Disqualifications, players. Um, there are there is an exception though. Um, the replay official may correct obvious errors involving player safety at any point throughout the game, or they may correct any egregious obvious error that may have a significant impact on the outcome of the game in the last five minutes of the fourth quarter or during overtime. Um, hmm. XFL gets a W. It's a W on this rule. Now, lastly here, I do believe these are the five common sense rules. One foot in bounds. To catch ball means that a player secures the control of a live ball in flight before the ball touches the ground or touches the ground in bounds with any part of his body and then maintain, maintains control of the ball long enough to enable him to perform an act upon comments of the game or long enough to pitch or hand off the ball, advance and avoid or ward off a defender, and other stuff like that. Hmm. Hmm. I'm going to say the XFL wins with this rule. Um, this is actually a good rule. So... The dedicated ball spotting official, there will be a dedicated ball spotting official who will solely be responsible for quickly spotting the ball and getting a new ball after each play. Um, hmm. 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 I don't know about y'all, but I think the XFL wins this one again. So this is a good rule. Um, um, coach to player communication. Here we go. While still in development, the goal is for select offensive players to have a coach to player helmet receiver. The coach to player system will allow a member of the coaching staff in the bench area or the coach's booth to communicate to a player through a speaker in his helmet. 
Now, the weird thing is, is that broadcast partners would have access to this communication and may use it during the game, which is, I think is kind of dumb, to be completely honest with you. Um, hmm. Simplified illegal man downfield. No ineligible player shall be or have been more than three yards beyond the line of scrimmage until a pass of throws a legal forward pass to cross the line of scrimmage. A player is in violation of this rule. Any part of his body is beyond a three yard limit. Um, it's mostly kind of the same, so there's nothing really here that, you know, can be like, oh, yeah. Um, and shorter half times, which is 10 minute break and then back to the action. Um, and that's it as far as the XFL rules go. Um, again, half time, eh, I mean, in college it's 15 minutes, in the NFL it's like 12 to 15 minutes, so not much of a big deal here. Uh, but what does this mean? What do I think? Well, if you haven't paid attention throughout this video, uh, most of the XFL rules are either kind of bad or they're actually pretty good. So, but what does this mean? What does this mean? I mean, there's a team, there's a team in your area, you know, that you're probably asking. There's a Dallas um, Renegades team in your area. Are you going to watch the XFL? The answer is probably no. Probably no. The other rule changes do kind of turn me completely off from watching. Um, some of them are very good. Don't, don't get me wrong. Some of them are very good rule changes. Uh, but the others, not so much. And, like, we could go over this again and stuff like that. But I don't feel like going over this again. Um, that some of the rule changes are good and some of them are not. Um... There's really, there's really no chance for kickers and punters. We, we can't laugh at kickers and punters when they miss a kick or, or you know, a, do a bad punt. You know, we can't really laugh at that. Um, not really digging the, not really digging the point system. I, it was never, a, it was never a thing that I liked. Um, I, I think the AAF got some rules that were completely in the right better than the XFL did, which is actually saying something considering the AAF died eight weeks in. Um, how long do I think the XFL will last? That's, that's the most important question here. Um, the XFL probably is going to last. It's going to go through at least its first year, maybe three could be five years, who knows, you know, it depends on what Vince McMahon is like, yo, what, what are we doing right now, uh, considering the state that WWE is in, um, I don't know, I, I, I don't completely know, so, um, but yeah, um, pretty long video today, and I gotta say, you know, Things are looking up for the expel, but at the same time, for me, um, I don't really completely know. I don't really think that the XFL has the leverage here. They have to. They have to really get it to me. They have to really get my attention to where they can make me a fan. And I don't think these rules completely do it. These rules are kind of confusing to the casual. To the filthy casual and some of us, um, these rules are probably going to be confusing as hell. Not going to lie to you. Um, some of these are just going to be changes that we're just not going to be used to. So, uh, in any case, it'll probably be some indoor football in March that I'll be keeping my eyes on. Um, indoor football is a hell of a lot easier to, to you know keep an eye on and, and, and keep yourself you know initiated with and stuff like that but uh, the XFL has some things going for it it just needs to change some of the other stuff um, and I think we'll be all right make it more a little bit more like the NFL but not completely um, 
yeah, that's going to do it. I'll take care. See you guys next time with more.